seen for us on homecoming again this year. And uh, what, what Sunday is that in September? First Sunday in September. There you go. There you want the date. There it is. Amen. First Sunday in September. And they'll be here to sing for us then. Looking forward to that. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Proverbs. You pray for us this morning. I've struggled with this message all week. And uh, I believe it's what the Lord wants us to preach, but it's not a very easy message. So you pray for us this morning. Amen. Proverbs chapter number 6. And I'll just begin reading in verse number 1. And uh, we go to the Lord in prayer first, and I will, I will just preach to you what God's laid on my heart today. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 6, let's pray. Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace. I pray right now, God, you'd help us around the Word of God. We've come to that time, Father, when the Word of God, that we know is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. And Father, we need, God, the Word of God in our hearts today. I pray that you'd help us to learn. I pray that you'd help us to grow. Father, I pray that we'd uh, take the message, God, that it might be used for thy glory to help us to say nothing contrary to thy will, but all that we'd say to be to the glory of God. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter number 6. I'm just going to begin reading with verse number 1. Proverbs is a book of instruction. And if you read one book of one chapter of Proverbs every day in a, in a month, if it's a 31-day month, you'll read through the book of Proverbs. And uh, you can do that every year. It wouldn't hurt you a bit to read the book of Proverbs every month because it is uh, full of instruction. And it's full of, of what to do and it's full of how to live. And uh, here in, in chapter number 6 are some very important words of instruction that, it, that the, uh, Solomon is giving to, uh, you know, to his people or to us, to you and I. And words of wisdom comes from this great King Solomon. In verse number 1, my son... If thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. This is talking about surety, talking about uh, standing up to someone or standing up with someone as in a debt or as in a, uh, you know, a matter of, of purchasing something. And uh, if you're surety for that, then you know, it, it brings a binding upon you. Not to say not to do it, but it just means that, uh, that to do that, then you are uh, in, in bonded to that person or in bonded to that thing. Verse 3, do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which have no uh, guide, overseer, or ruler. Provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. This is speaking of provision. I believe God wants people to work, don't you? I believe God, God wants uh, well-bodied, healthy people to work. And he says, consider the ants, what they do. Have you ever sat out and watched ants during the summertime when you was a little kid? I still watch them now until they get the bug spray poured on them. But, you know, I, I, I kind of hate to do it. If I didn't get in the house and irritate my wife so, I, I probably wouldn't bother them too much. But they, are, they, very, you know, they work very diligently about what they do. And they tell me, now I've never checked it now, but they tell me that ants will work 24 hours a day and, uh, to, to provide and to uh, make sure there's plenty to eat. And I've watched four or five ants gather around a a piece of bread that was 15 times bigger than them. And they all get on one corner and off they go. There goes a, there goes a crumb going across your floor. You find out what it is, it's a couple of ants over there carrying, uh, carrying dinner home to the colony. Uh, but that's the way ants are. They're, they're uh, workers and they work hard. And the Bible compares men to that, that we, we should be like those ants, that we should work and that we should uh, you know, provide and, and do that which is necessary. This crowd today that wants to live off of me all the time, amen, I, it kind of irritates me. I'll just be honest with you. I see healthy, well-bodied people uh, that are, you know, living off the government and uh, not working and could get a job because I can't hire enough people. And, but they won't as long as they can live off of me. And I'll just tell you, sometimes that kind of gets under my skin. 
Now, people that need help ought to be helped. And the church ought to do a big part of that too, by the way. But, but people that, that uh, uh, you see, people that just don't want to work, I just don't have much use for that. Let them get a job like I do and work for a living. And the Bible compares it to that. They calls them sluggers, those that don't do that. And verse 9, How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou rise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and they won't as, ar- as an armed man. Now, it begins here talking about this person who is a naughty person. A naughty person is a wicked person. We used to tell our little kids, you know, you're being naughty. That's not what the Bible's talking about, just being being mischievous or being naughty or doing little things they shouldn't do. This is a naughty person in Scripture here. It's an evil, wicked, vile person. And it says here, a naughty person is a, a wicked man, walketh with a fraudulent walketh with a froward mouth, which is a fraudulent mouth. You be careful of the wicked men of this world. They're getting more deceitful and more deceptive, and the wickedness of the world is getting more and more, and people are in any way they can devising wickedness uh, in our land, in our nation. I wonder sometimes about how our government is run. I wonder sometimes if they're not full of naughty people, wicked people that are running our country. Listen to what, what a naughty person does. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teaches with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. This is a naughty part, person. You get around someone that, that, you know, that's got that look about him, you know they'll wink at you and say, come on, go with me. There, many times these people are leading others into wickedness, leading them into evil, leading them into, into things that they ought not to be doing. And a, a wicked person does that. And they're full of mischief and they're always sowing discord. Now we're going to get to that in just a minute. But you beware of those that's always sowing discord, whether it be in your family, whether it be at your workplace, you be careful about those that are always sowing discord. When you sow discord, it always sprouts. And, it, and if, you, it, if it's fertilized a little bit and it's watered a little bit, discord always grows into a field of dis, people that are living in discord. Now, we read on right here. Therefore shall his calamity come, come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These next two verses here are three verses I want to preach to you. For a little while. Now, I'm not going to, this very self explanatory, these verses are. So it won't take me long to preach to you what the Word of God says. You can read it, and with a little explanation, you can, uh, you can understand the things that God hates. And I'll preach to you a little while this morning uh, the, thing, the seven things that God hates. In verse number 16, these six things doth God hate. Now, this word hate means that it is an enemy, that it is a foe. Now, we say we hate a lot of things. I don't hate any person. Let me clear that up this morning before you begin to think that I hate people. I don't hate people. I love people. I hate sin, though. I hate sin, and I'm going to kick it as long as I can kick it. As the old preacher said, I'm going to preach against it as long as I can preach against it. I'm going to kick it as long as I can, uh, you know, as long as I can kick it. And when I'm old and when I'm dying and when I ain't got no feet, uh, feet to kick with when I ain't got no teeth to, uh, you know, to, to gnaw at it with. I'm going to gum it, amen, till the day I go home to be with the Lord. Amen. God help us to be against sin. And what's wrong in a lot of churches today? Nobody's against sin anymore. What is sin? Sin is something that comes between you and God. It is missing the mark. And friend, this world's full of evil. I don't have to, I don't have to tell you that. You go outside and look, you won't go, you won't go far without seeing the wickedness and the evilness of the world. We, you know, kids aren't taught any against evil anymore. Many children are not taught about how evil sin is and about how wicked sin is and about what sin will do to you and about how sin will drive you to, to live in a defeated life. And in the life of believers, sin has become a common thing. 
Listen, friend, we ought not be living in sin. I'll just tell you plain and simple. We ought, God's people should not be living in sin. We shouldn't toddle up to it. We shouldn't try to say, well, it's all right. We shouldn't try to cover it up. We ought to admit and own up to our sin and turn from our sin because the Bible says, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, which is sin, then God's going to hear us. And the Bible says that there are some things that God hates, some wicked things that God hates. Now, I love the sinner. If you happen to be here this morning, you're lost without God. Amen. I, I pray God of heaven to get a hold of you. Send all time Holy Ghost conviction to your heart that you might come to know the Lord. But God can't, God don't tolerate sin. And God, God don't look at sin. It is evil before him. <coughs> so the book of Proverbs tells us here that God hates sin. It says he hates these things. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. Now some would say that the last of the list here is the one that is abominable to God. But, the, but the, this is only a completion of the, of the six. The number seven is a number of completion. And so this uh, completes the list that the, the, you know, that the writer is trying to convey to us. And surely this last one, when we get to it, is an evil, wicked sin. But it is not greater than the other sins. Sin is sin before an almighty God. Amen? Y'all with me now? Don't, 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 you know, look at me now. Pay me attention because this is hard. It's hard on me as it is on you. But sin is sin before an almighty God. If I say, if I go and, 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 and tell, tell somebody a little, a little white lie. Now this is a joke, but I'm just going to throw something at him here. Look good. Now, if I mean that, and I do, by the way. <laughs> but if I didn't think that, and I walk, hey, you look good today. And I didn't mean that. You know, that's just a little white lie. Ain't that right? Let me find somebody else to pick on. He ain't looking at you. I don't like the way he's looking at me. <laughs> if you had on a pink polka dot shirt, and I walked up to you, and you ain't. I don't guess. Not today, anyway. And I walked up to you and said, boy, that shirt looks good on you. I'd be lying through my teeth. <laughs> now, you say, well, now, you, I mean, you're just trying to make him feel good. It don't matter. It, the, listen, the cause does not matter. If, you're, if you tell a lie, you tell a lie. Amen. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm just trying to point out to you what little sin sometimes that we as believers, uh, we say, well, we'll get by with that. That's, that's okay. We can get by with that. That's really not too bad. Amen. Y'all with me now? It's not, the little sins are not really too bad. Listen, before an almighty God, sin is sin. Now we see somebody staggering down the street drunk and we say, boy, they're wicked as a devil. Won't we say that? But we see, you know, we see somebody and, and they're not doing much wrong, you know, they're just doing a little bit of wrong. And we'll look over that and say, well, there ain't nothing to that. Listen, before an almighty God, sin is sin. There's no little sin. There's no big sin. There's, it's all black or white before God. It's all either righteous or it's wicked. Amen. I'm not against the sinner. I love the sinner, but I'm against the sin. Whether it be a believer or whether it be a lost man, I'm against sin. And you should be too. Amen. God help me to take a stand against sin. These six things does God hate. Number one, a proud look. God hates that. God, that's an enemy of God. It is disgusting before God is a proud look. How many of you know proud people? Come on, raise your hand now. I'm just go ahead and answer me. But let's be a, let's have this an honesty service today, all right? And Frank, whether this ever makes it or not, because I don't know, but anyway, you determine that. I'll leave that all in your hands. Let's have an honesty. How many of you know proud people? Now, is pride wrong? Pride cometh before a fall. But now there's, there's different kinds of pride. I'm proud of my family. I'm proud of my wife. I'm proud of my grandkids. I don't believe there's anything wrong with that pride. But now if I stand up here before you now, <clears throat> don't even go there. Of all the people you can have brought up, but anyway, 
I'm not going there. I'm going to use myself. If I come before you on Sunday morning, and I want you to look at me and see how good looking I am, because that's, you know, that's the way these people do. I'm fooling myself for number one. But if I think that and I prance myself around in front of you and I use great swelling words of man's wisdom, all proud of myself, and every word I say is correct, I use the proper grammar, I use the proper English, and you sat back there and snore on me because you ain't understood a word I think, but I'm proud of the way I presented my message. God hates that. God, give us some preachers. Give us some men of God that don't care what people might think and don't care what people might think of them to, to rear back and preach the Word of God. This little old fellow, he came into church one morning and, and the preacher invited him to come and preach. And boy, he was so proud of himself. He was going to get to preach at this big fancy church. And he come marching in his best three-piece suit and he had his hair all slicked up. And he was looking fine, he thought. And he walked in there and he carried his Bible, about a two-ton Bible under his arm. He pranced himself up there and sat down on the front pew and the preacher said, come up here and sit with me. So he went up there and he marches up there and he sits down and he sits there with great dignity. Don't crack a smile. He's proud. Boy, I'm up here. Boy, I'm up here in front of a thousand people and I'm going to get to preach. Man, I'm going to do such a good job. You know what that is? That's pride. And he, the pre pastor, announces him. And, of course, the preacher don't know what's going on in his heart, but he's full of pride. And he gets up there, and he lays his, he lays his sermon down. Brethren, we are gathered together today. We want to, for you today to worship God. And he uses all those words, and he gets through, and no power about him at all. But he's proud, and he... he tries to preach and he can't preach and God's jerking it out from under him before he can get anything safe and he walks down out of there like this. Eases up to the front pew when he's through and sits down defeated, broken, ruined, beaten all to death because God's laid a whipping on him for thinking how prideful he was. He goes out, sermons over the preacher, stands up and tries to clean up the mess because that's what a preacher does when he has a Another preacher in the pulpit that makes a mess, he has to try to clean up the mess. Preacher tries to clean up the mess and, and uh, hoping the church will forgive him for having such or that to preach to them. That's why I'm careful about who I let in this pulpit, by the way. And when he leaves there, the old preacher pulls him off to the side. Now, you remember, he came up those steps like this, but when he went down, he went like this. The old preacher pulls him over to the side and says, Young man, if you learn to go up those steps the way you come down today, then God will use you. Amen. God help me. There, listen, there is no preach in this man right here. But in the Holy Ghost of God, there's some preach. Amen. The Holy Ghost of God can take anyone and use them for his glory. But God's not going to use a prideful man. They may make a good statement. They may get some people to follow him because they'll admire his pride. Pride comes before fall. How many... TV preachers, have you known that have made their way and made their, you know, made their life out of teaching and you find out later that they've had an affair with another woman? Pride cometh before a fall and haughty look before destruction. But God hates, God hates a proud look. So don't be guilty of thinking you're something you're not. What are we? We're sinners saved by the grace of God and that's all we are. I have no, I can, I listen, let me tell you something I am proud of. I'm proud of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad, I'm proud to say to you today that I'm a child of the King. That's good pride. Amen. I'm proud to say that. But I'm not proud of my life. I'm not proud of my sins. I'm not proud of my failures. But I am proud of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But God hates the proud look of man. Number two, you say, preacher, please, it don't get any easier, okay? God hates a lying tongue. Someone, a lying tongue here speaking to someone that's deceitful or someone that's running a sham or a scam. I had this lady call me the other day. I knew what was happening. But this is deceitful. God hates this. God hates stuff like this. Now, they say, if you're a telemarketer, this ain't no slam on telemarketers. I know you're doing what you're supposed to do. But they called me up on the phone and said, uh, you are the recipient 
And I knew right then that there ain't nothing going to good come out of this. All I'm going to get is an earful, and then I'm going to say I don't want it and hang up. I know what's happening, but I'm gonna have, I'll be nice and let them go. You're going to be recipient of a new iPad. Well, I'd like to have an iPad. She said, are you interested? Well, of course I'm interested. And so I started to cut to the chase. I said, no, I'll just let her do her job. You know, she'll feel better about it, maybe. And so you're going to get this, and here's what comes with it, and, and, and I ne- what's your email address, and, and what is your physical address. They're not asking for something they don't already know. So far, so far I'm giving them. I never give out credit cards or social security numbers or nothing like that over the phone. But, I, but you know, she kept, I about 10 minutes she was telling me what a good thing I was getting. But guess what I had to do to get it? It wasn't free. I knew it wasn't going to be free. I didn't set myself up for a letdown. I had to go somewhere and look at some condominiums, timeshares. Been there and done that. It's never free. And so I said, ma'am, I knew there was a catch somewhere. You have a good day. Goodbye. Now, she was just doing her job, and I know that. But you know what? That's deceitful. Leading somebody on. If that's really free, all she'd have asked was, what's your mailing address, and I'm putting it in the mail today. Amen? That would be free, would it not? But you know that ain't going to... That's deceitful. The world is full of deceitful people. And I'm going on in the, biz- in the, in the uh, business industry, in the retail industry. There's a lot of deceitful things go on in the retail industry. Let me tell you one of them for sure. They're going to run a high-price sale down at the store. Amen? <laughs> and so two or three weeks before that high-price sale, what they do is they jack all them normal prices up about twice. And then they run a big high price sale and they're getting regular retail back out of it. You say that's shrewd business. That, I'll tell you what that is. That's deceitful. No wonder our country is in a mess because of all the deceit going on. If it's high price, if you, it ought to be like this, brother. If it's high price, if you go down there and buy your new tractor and it's $10,000 and they say it's going, to be, it's going to have a high price sale, what it ought to be is $5,000. Ain't that right? But if they're going to do that, they're going to run it $20,000 and then tell you you're getting a high price for 10. That's a mouthful, wasn't it? But that's deceitful. God hates deceit. God hates a lying tongue. Tell the truth. Is there anybody that'll tell the truth? I know some people that can't hardly tell the truth. If it killed them, they couldn't hardly tell the truth. Nobody in here, by the way, in case something's ringing your bell and you think I'm talking about you, I'm not. I have no idea. This just, I told you this is what I'm going to be. This is what God gave me. I know, I know some people right now, if you just watch them long enough, before the day's over, every day you'll catch them in a lie. Lord, help us. A lying tongue. God hates it. Why are men so intent on doing what God hates? Lord, help me to be truthful. Help me to be honest. God, help me to be honest about my dealings and truthful to people and not halfway tell the truth. Listen, a half-truth, y'all write this down in your Bible because you're going to eat it sometime. A half-truth presented as a whole truth is an untruth. A half-truth presented as a whole truth is an untruth. You tell, you, what you're doing, you say, well, I'm just telling half a lie. no. You ain't telling half a lie. You ain't telling half the truth. You're telling a lie. Amen. That didn't cost you nothing. That's extra. I didn't even have it wrote down. God hates a lying tongue. God hates hands that shed innocent blood. Now, boy, this really got to me. I got stunking on this. What are hands that shed innocent blood? Well, these people that go in uh, like uh, like 9-11, those that went in and and, uh, blew those buildings up and killed 3,000 plus of, of innocent people, God hates that. And these uh, people that will go in and, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll uh, have a suicide bomb on. They'll walk into a group of people and blow up innocent people. God hates that. Those that hate innocent people. But guess what? It don't stop there. What about these doctors, amen, that'll take a woman that's with child and tell her it's just a piece of, it's just a, a you know, just a, a clump of cells, and they'll murder that newborn baby. You know what that is? God hates that. God hates that. But that's hush hush today. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about how America has murdered millions and millions and millions of babies and why God's blessings ain't on this country. No, we don't want to talk about that. That's too political to talk about. Let me tell you something. Our nation is in a mess because God hates sin.
Hands that shed innocent blood. Murderers. But you know what else? God hates these faith killers. Not faith healers, faith killers. People that tried to destroy your faith. You know this bunch of quacks that call themselves a religion and they're atheists. They're so messed up it is pathetic. They're on their own chaplain. For what reason? If they don't believe in God, why don't they just not believe in God and be done with it? Why do they have to force that on everybody else? You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to kill my faith. They're trying to kill your faith because they don't believe in something that they don't. I don't believe in them at all. I've never met but one man that said he didn't believe in God and really meant that. I believe one man, and he wasn't in his right mind. But everybody I know, you know, about everybody I know, that is, I've heard stories of people in plane crashes and, and, and uh, uh, you know, atheists in plane crashes. The last thing you heard him say was, Lord, God help me. If they don't believe in God, why do they fight him so? That's the devil's crowds who that is, and that's all they are. Let me tell you, who are they? They're God deniers. They're God haters, and God hates that sin. God hates that sin of those that would shed innocent blood and those that would try their best to kill my faith. I'm a Christian, okay? I'm saved by God's grace. And put a label on me of a Baptist if you want to. But first and foremost, I'm a child of the King. Hallelujah. And nothing anybody can do can ever take that away from me. But I'll tell you something. The world would love to do it. They'd love to kill our faith. They'd love to kill your faith. And it ain't just the atheist crowd, my friend. We're being shut down all over this country and all over the world. Christians are being persecuted more than they ever have been before. They're faith killers, killers and God hates that. That's, a, that's a, an abomination to God. Our hands that shed innocent blood murders and those that kill our, try to kill our faith. Then number four, a heart that devises wicked imaginations. A man's heart is deceitful. A man's heart is deceitfully wicked. And the world is full of deceitfully wicked men that are always trying with their imagination to come up with something else to create more evil and more wickedness. Through the in industry, they call it entertainment, but it's not entertainment. It's just, it's, just, it's just fleshly wickedness. God hates that. God give a man a mind to use for his glory. And yet if it ain't under the control of the Holy Spirit of God, it's under control of the devil. And I'll tell you something, friend, today, you need to let your imagination run wild, controlled by the Spirit of God. Because of its control, if your imagination is controlled by your flesh or it's controlled by Satan, all that can come out of that is evil imagination, evil wickedness. God hates that. You ever catch your mind going places it ought not to go? Hello? You ever catch your thoughts going places they shouldn't be going? You know what that is? That's the devil trying to, trying to get you off the thought of God and the things of God. When your mind starts to go that way, that's not because of the Spirit of God that lives within you. It's because of the influence of the world, the flesh, and the devil. And listen, we, our imagination is good if controlled by the Spirit of God. The man's heart is wicked. Above all wickedness and not in control by the Spirit of God, when it's not, it, it devises mischief, evil. It devises wicked imaginations. That's man's heart today. Do you wonder why this world is such a mess it's in? If you can stomach it, turn on the television and watch some of the evil on the TV. There's this, I just say, I've not even watched it and I won't watch it. And, and if you watch it, shame on you. I'll just tell you, shame on you right away. This, if I looked at the, if I looked at the previews right, it's, it's the name of it's Modern Family, and they got a couple of. I got rebuked for using that word the last time, so you use your imagination. You know what I was about to say. I'm not going to be politically correct. They're full of evil. The Bible calls them homosexual. Okay. And they're right, and I think in this case it's two lesbians, but, but they're, they're a family together raising a child. That ain't, listen, that ain't of the Lord. You think that's of God? That ain't of God. It's wicked. It's evil. 
It's something that man has conjured up and it's been trying to be pushed upon society and society because of their lack of knowledge of God is accepting this. The schools are beginning to teach it, what they've not already taught. More and more begin to teach it that it's all right for two men to, to raise a, a, a child together that they can't have naturally. They've got to adopt one. Oh, my, we having fun today. Oh, I'm telling you, friend, this, this is why our world is in the mess it's in. And because God's people want to suck up to that and say, okay, it's all right, we'll tolerate that. We'll let them come into our pulpits and preach. We'll let them teach our kids in Sunday school. It's all right. They're, they just got a different lifestyle. Yeah, a different lifestyle full of hell. God help us, friend. God help us as believers to open our eyes and look up. We're living in a, in a day and a world of sin. And if the best time in your life to live is right now because our light is going to shine brighter in this wicked world we live in. Okay, I'll move on. Somebody said, go on, preacher. I'm going to. Number five, God hates swift feet that run to mischief. And that's, that's people that, that run to mischief continually, try to, get, try to get other people into things. God hates that. You ever had somebody that just tried to get everybody into trouble all the time? God hates that. If you live your life for the Lord, if you live your life to serve Him, you'll never be guilty of this. And friend, it bothers me when quote unquote Christians try to get people into something that's wrong. I'll move on. Number six, a false witness that speaketh lies. You know what that is? You know what a false witness is that speaketh lies? Oh, you're such a good young man. You're such a good man. You raised your family right. You're such a good young man. You know what I saw him doing last week? <laughs> a false witness. Now, as far as I know, he's a good young man. Now, I didn't see him doing nothing last week, okay? He lives in Alabama. That's why it's safe for me to say that. <laughs> But a false witness, who likes a false witness? Anybody like a false witness? If I'm in a trial, I, I want the truth to be told, amen? If I'm in a trial, and you've got to stand up there when you go before, a, I went uh, to interview one time for a, a juror's position. And I had to, you know, I had to tell them, yeah, I'll tell the truth. I'll do everything I'm supposed to do. And I got up there, and they wanted me so bad not to tell the truth on an issue. And I, they said, how do you feel about capital punishment? I said, I'm all for it. The one that wanted me to tell that, he, he kind of cringed, you know, that's going to get you kicked off. Well, ask me a question, I'll tell you no lies. Amen, God helping me. And they kicked me off real quick. They said, well, well this needs to be di dismissed. Why? Because I was what the Bible's for. But I could have got up there and said, well, nah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's really right. I, I, I don't think, they'd probably let me on that jury, but you know, I'd have been on there a, as a false witness. And I wouldn't want that kind of person on my jury if I stand in trial. Just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. It's a whole lot easier to tell the truth than it is to try to back up your lies. Mm. <laughs> Look at Washington today. Amen. That's all I'm saying. Seven, six things does God hate. Yea, seven are abomination to him. The complete, completion of the list is this one. He that soweth discord among the brethren. Now here's where it really hits home to the church. Now it calls us brethren here. Now if you're here a child of God this morning, I'm looking around, I reckon about everybody is. If you're here a child of God, you're my brother or my sister in Christ. Amen? And the last thing that I need to be doing is to sow discord among the brethren. Now if a preacher ever gets doing that, you can run him off real quick. But if a church member gets that, it's a little harder to deal with. Now I can give you some examples of sowing discord among the brethren. I'm just not sure whether I should or not. Because just as sure as I do, somebody is liable to think, well, that preacher really knows something about that, or he'd never use them as an illustration. So I've got to be real careful about that. Amen, Frank? Frank's back there sweating bullets. 
Have I been, listen, let me ask you something. Have I been out of the Bible yet today? Have I been out of the Word of God yet today? I'm telling you the truth. God hates the, the number seven thing and that completes the list of what God hates is those that sow discord among the brethren. They, you know what they need to be done? They need to be run out, run off, got rid of. If I'm over here telling, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. You think what you want to think. This is the best, this, this is one of the finest ladies in our church. Amen. Y'all agree with that? And, and, and if I went out and lied on her about something, I'm just sowing discord among the brethren. Amen? Come on now, you with me or am I losing you? I better not be losing you, amen. We'll have to talk after church. I want to tell you something. If you go out telling something on somebody that ain't right, all you're doing in their brother in Christ, all you're doing is sowing discord among the brethren. I suppose you, now this ain't going to happen, okay, so I'll use me and you say what you want to. I don't give a rip. Suppose, Brother Max, that you saw me coming out of a bar. Now, the only reason I was in that bar was because somebody needed my help for some reason. I run in there, and I was out in three minutes' time, but you saw me coming out of the bar. What would be the right thing to do? That's right. I, bl I believe what Max would do, I believe he'd come and say, Preacher, what in the world were you doing in that bar? And I'd say, Max, my brother's in there. It wouldn't be my brother, believe me, but I'm just using that for an illustration. Dennis, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about you, not you either. Good grief, I'm getting in trouble. His, my brother's name Dennis is why I said that. <laughs> I believe I'd go, Max, my brother Dennis is in there and he needed help. And I, all I done was went in there and tried to get him out. His wife wanted me to get him out. Now my wife, my brother has never took a drink in his life, okay? Clear all that up. And Max say, well, you know, I don't know. You just keep that between us. Now, that'd be the right thing to do. I mean, are you agreeable? Yeah. But you know what a lot of Christians would want to do? They, if a deacon, he'd, hey, Brother Frank, i got to tell you something. <laughs> you know what I've seen our preacher doing? I saw him coming out of a bar. What was he doing in there, Frank? said, so, I don't know what he's doing in there. Well, let's find out what he's doing in there first. <laughs> now, am I right? Yeah. But now handled wrong. That person would go to somebody that didn't give a rip about nothing. So guess where I saw our preacher coming out of? I saw him coming out of a bar. Tell the wrong person, here's what the wrong person's going to do. Oh, really? Get on the phone. You know where I saw our preacher at? He's coming out of a bar. Time he got around, I was staggering out of the bar drunk. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We make fun and we laugh, but sowing discord among the brethren is a serious offense in the church. It has killed more churches. It has ruined more churches. When people sow discord among the brethren, when you see someone in a fault, what do you do to them? You go to them and you pray for them and you say, can't we help you some way? But the worst thing you can do is go sow discord among the brethren because before you know it, you've got a, a house full of people in discord. Fighting and a fuming and a arguing and a telling lies on one another, and God ain't nowhere near that. No wonder God hates it. Discord, throwing discord among the brethren. I'll tell you how to prevent that. Remember, it could be you in that same situation. We go to digging in each other's closets, and you don't want to dig in mine, and I don't want to dig in yours. We probably have an all, awful lot we could gossip and talk about. See, Sowing discord is like is gossiping in the church. Hello, I'm about through. Hey, I'm about finished with the sermon. You can leave if you want to before I get started. But let me tell you something. Gossip has ruined a lot of people. It's ruined a lot of lives. And it's ruined a lot of churches because usually gossip ain't nothing but a lie anyway. Brother John, if I've got something to say to you, Lord help me, I'm going to come say it right to your face. Amen. And if you say something to me I don't like, Lord helping me, I'm going to tell you I don't like it. Amen. But let's be yay, yay, and nay, nay. Let's don't go around and talk about people behind their back. You got something to say about the preacher? Amen. Don't roast me for lunch. Don't have me for Sunday dinner. Just come and talk to me. Amen. I've not bit anybody yet. Matter of fact, I don't reckon I've even snapped at anybody yet. I, about, about right now, I'm getting ready. Amen. I, I've got, I'm getting ready. But let me tell you, I hate discord among the brethren. 
I've let it, listen, I've let it tie my stomach up at night. I've let it cause me to lay in the bed sleepless at night because somebody was mad at somebody in the church, but they're not here. Not yet. I don't want it to get that way. But I've laid wonder the next day. Oh, God in heaven, what am I going to do? Because that was saying that about this one. God help us. This court will kill a church. This court will kill your Christian testimony. No wonder God hates those that sow, sow discord among the brethren. Six things does God hate, yea, seven is an abomination to him. And what I believe the man of wisdom is saying here, that these things, not only these, the Bible's full of things that, that, that God calls sin, but these seven things, my friend, will ruin your life and will ruin a church. God help us. God help us. Church is doing pretty good right now. Amen. But hey, don't, let, don't you believe for a moment that the devil won't destroy it if he can. And if he can do it through loose lips, amen, he'll do it. If he can do it through a lying tongue, he'll do it. If he can do it through gossip, he'll do it. But I want to tell you something. If we'll keep our hearts right with the Lord, if we'll let the Spirit of God control us, then God will continue to bless us. And there's no telling what Gables Creek Baptist Church can do. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God this morning. They said, I pray, God, you... I've said all I can. I need to say. May the Spirit of God say the rest. And dear Jesus, I pray God that nothing we've said has been contrary to thy will. And I pray God that you'd let this message drive deep into our hearts. Lord, let us as a church love one another and care for one another. Let us lift up each other in prayer. And Lord, let us, let us take time, Father, to try to understand each other's needs. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'm through. I've done it.